Let's <clears throat> call the meeting to order tonight. I've got a frog in my throat, so I'll be doing less talking than normal. Um, so maybe some of my committee members can pick up the slack here on, on this. But um, let's uh, open by um, moving to approve the minutes of the May 22nd, 2023 meeting, committee meeting. Uh, are you moving? Or? So I'll second. Motion and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes. Okay, let's consider substitute ordinance 10-2023. Uh, we also have another proposed round of potential amendments or changes to this. We passed it, or excuse me, we amended it at the last meeting. Uh, I'd like to call on Director Vargo to uh, walk through some additional potential changes, but council members on the committee and otherwise, any opening questions, comments? Just, thank you. Just for clarification, so the version we're looking at is in Granicus or not? I don't know. Yeah, so that would be a version. So we substituted S10. the top version, and so we may want to substitute the newest version that says that's like June 9th, 2023. General question. Okay, why don't, why don't, why don't we, before making a motion, discuss any discussion? Do you have any further commentary, um, Councilwoman? Um, can we kind of highlight what the differences are between the two? Yeah, we're about to get okay. to that. Okay, great. That's the main question. Mr. Vargo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the recent changes are minor, uh, really points of clarification. The first one is in the definition of an operator, just to make sure that we're not bringing in auto parts stores. It was never the intent of the drafters to include auto parts stores but there was suggestion on the floor that our definition might have brought them in. We've clarified that. Uh, we have also clarified that our request, the city's request for information from an entity that's under inspection is limited for the purpose of the inspection. The city's not gonna request information for any other purpose other than to facilitate the inspection. So that, that is absolutely it. Um, there were two other minor non-substantive changes that, that do not change uh, anything, just, just continue with the, the message, but in a clearer way. Thank you. So uh, we would respectfully, after your deliberation, uh, request that uh, the committee move to, um, uh, to substitute the latest version for the prior version. And then um, we request that the committee then um, uh, move to recommend the substituted version to the full council uh, for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Director. And for the second change you mentioned, can you point where in the uh, proposal that lies? Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, if you look at 781.02, automobile business operation permit, subsection D is in David. Okay, and the change narrowed? It, it narrows the purpose of the request for the information to keep it as focused as possible and non-intrusive as possible. Okay, thank you. Council members, questions, comments? None. Kyle, Councilman Baker. Uh, th thank you, Councilman Bullock. Um, I'm curious, you know, so it, it sounds like um, as this legislation has progressed, there has been some kind of uh, coordination or meetings that the administration had with the folks in the industry, right, that, that operate facilities. Um, and, and they had, you know, I know the first round of changes were more substantial 
and and spoke to those. Um, now I'm curious if if are there any other areas that that you understand that they are uncomfortable with within this um, current ordinance as as I guess proposed tonight to change a little bit? Because um, I'd like to understand how they feel about it. I know some of them are here. You know, perhaps the chair will allow them to make public comment on the point. Um, but I'm just curious as to that point. I mean, I I understand as as a customer of an automotive business how they operate from the outside, but I don't run an automotive business. So that's what I'm curious about. Yes, and I, I, I'm not sure I <clears throat> fully heard your question. I believe it's, um, are there any changes that certain members of the industry desired that we did not make, in I, essence? Y y yes, I, th I think what, are there still some, some chafing points, I guess, uh, other than like the fact that we're regulating it? Because, uh, sure. or the, that the city is seeking to regulate it, uh, yes. but like specific provisions within it that they find objectionable. Yes. Um, uh, let me start with, I believe, um, and it's only my perception, that the overwhelming majority of the industry is fully supportive of the current version. Uh, they understood uh, the regulation. They expressed concern with specific provisions. They were good faith concerns. We addressed them. So I'm going to address your question, but I, I think that the majority of the industry has no issue whatsoever with this current version. There may be a small subset of the industry that has a fundamental disagreement with this ordinance, and that is that industry segment does not see a difference between a vehicle under repair or to be repaired and a patron at a restaurant who parks their vehicle on the street. Certain operators believe that the operation itself is entitled to use the street parking for its inventory vehicles, whether to sell whether to lease or whether to repair, simply because they feed the meter. They see no difference between that vehicle and a customer vehicle at a restaurant. That fundamental disagreement tells the administration why this ordinance is necessary. That is the crux of the difference, in my opinion, Councilman. Thank you. Um, I'd like, we certainly do want to have public comment. Sorry for my voice. Um, the, um, there is one change I'd like to propose for the consideration, which is in, it's a small point, in 781.06 appeal rights, subsection D. So on the new version, which I know isn't adopted yet, but that would be the last page says an automobile business operation that was operating its business prior to the denial of a permit renewal. I would, I would suggest we make that read instead, denial of a permit or permit renewal. And maybe the law director can help me here. What, what I think I'm reading here is that, um, uh, what is, how do I read permit renewal? The initial, I wanna make sure we're covering the initial permit there, not just a permit renewal. Well, it, it's, a, it's a specific uh, issue, Mr. Chair. If you look at subsection E right below it, what the ordinance provides, and I think it is sound, is that if you're starting up without a permit, then you wait for your permit, even if it's denied, and you wait through the appeal process before you begin operations. Because elsewhere, there's a prohibition on operating without a permit. However, if you are in business, have a permit, and have had it suspended, then we are maintaining the status quo for your business. You continue in business until a final resolution of that suspension. So okay. we draw the difference. So, so walk me through the, all right, the permit involved here is 
it's a new legal requirement, isn't it? That is correct. Okay, so no business has <clears throat> a permit yet to renew, correct? That is correct. Okay, there are plenty of businesses that are grandfathered into current operations because that's been reality. And are they covered, as my uh, colleague over here said, by subsection E in the event of a new applicant? I, have, I believe so, okay. yes. So the way this works is you have to apply um, if you fail to get a permit, subsection E covers it, that during that um, appeals process, which this details, no start of the business operation may occur pending the appeal. Okay. And then the same thing would happen if you get a permit for a certain time period, a few years down the line, you have to reapply. Subsection D covers that, right? That is correct. Okay. All right. So go ahead, Councilwoman. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Director Vargo. Um, I am anxious to hear um, from our guests, but I also uh, just wondered, with this being, should this be passed? It would be a new process for. So for, I would imagine that most auto uh, businesses in Lakewood have heard about this going on, but um, how do we plan to notify the auto businesses that they need to do this? I'm assuming there's a plan. Council, we've met with, I think, almost all of them already. They're aware of the dates and times. Um, I'd be shell-shocked if anybody within the industry, but we will obviously notify once this goes official, like we would anything else. I'm sure we'll get press coverage like we have because this has been a, a you know a topic that of deep concern and rightly should be since it's a new legislation for us. Be like a letter sent or something officially. I suppose we could send a letter if need be. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And may I add, Council Member, um, the ordinance does not take effect until January of 2024. So there is six months for that information to get out and. That was deliberate so the industry can um, adapt to the ordinance and, and be ready for the permitting process. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair. Um, so my question is about the annual permit fee um, and annual permitting process. Does that mean that every year there's gonna be a new inspection? Yeah, yes, Councilman. Okay, that's all. Okay, um, other questions, Council? Let's uh, hear from members of the public if we've got, <clears throat> pardon me, a sign-in sheet to use, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Jerry Knapp, please join us. And um, Junior, state your name and address for the record, and please. Are we on now? Okay, cool. Uh, Jerry Knapp, Jr., 14588 Madison Avenue. Um, I'm the owner of uh, Madison Avenue Auto Service, Knapp's Automotive in uh, Lakewood. Uh, I took a look at this, ran it by my brother, ran it by my father, several other people in the industry who are not able to be here tonight. We're all fine with it. Um, you are going to get some pushback from a couple people, um, kind of to be expected, but just looking at this, any decent auto repair shop, I would say nationwide, should be able to adhere by these guidelines. It's nothing constrictive. It's just, hey, why don't you clean up your parking lot and make sure there's ample parking here and just take care of your business. Um, I'm perfectly fine with it. Uh, these gentlemen over here were very nice and uh, welcomed us in. We talked with them. They listened to us. Uh, we've made little revisions here and there, and I don't see any issue with this at all. Um, I think it's going to be great for us, great for the community, makes our shops as an industry look better, um, so I'm 100% for it. And if there's anything else you guys have or you guys have questions just about the automotive industry as well, um, be free to, feel free to contact me outside. Um, Mr. Baker there, uh, you know, your question was, you know, how do the other people feel about it? I would say as a professional shop, I'm perfectly fine with it. I'm not really worried about this. Um, you know, we might have to do a couple different things in our parking lot, and we've already 
uh, done some different structure stuff. Um, so we uh, are enclosed. We got rid of some stuff that we had outside, uh, put some new enclosures in, making sure everything's cleaned up, ready to go. We'll reline our parking lots to kind of get, figure out where we can get the most out of our space as well. Um, so it's just easy, minor stuff. So I have no issues with it, and I appreciate you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Next, uh, Mr. Dan Budka. Welcome and please say your name and address for the record. Dan Bodka, 13600 Madison. Um, as an industry professional down the street from Jerry, I'd like to thank you guys and the city for greatly amending this to something that's workable. Um, I have no problems with it as well. Um, I do have two questions. On uh, 781.02 section G, if this is effective on a calendar year basis, why would it expire on June 30th? Let me take a look. Um, administration, would you like to address that? <clears throat> sure. I think the original provision uh, called for expiration to be the end of the year, December 30th, end of the calendar year. This is another example of good input from the industry in good faith. I would propose uh, a change right now on the floor to effectuate this uh, Good comment. And I think we just simply de delete a, a calendar year and substitute an annual. Be effective on an annual basis. So to so your it would point, expire on December 31st. Uh, on an annual basis, but shall expire on June 30th. So, so what is the um, annual calendar schedule that the administration anticipates for inspections? Yeah, the way, I'm sorry, council, councilman, I, I see it as it goes into effect January 1st. The first uh, licensure period will be, just the quirk of the calendar, it'll be 18 months, so the, the, the renewal will come up June 30 of every subsequent year after that first year. So just in, in practice, when do inspections happen? Is it spring season, something like that? It's going to happen in the month of June, and, and here's why. The building department has other inspections at the end of December. And so to uh, facilitate their schedule, it made sense to them after consultations with them to put it on a June basis. Okay. That, that, that answers your question, perhaps? Yeah, Sir. pretty much. Um, okay. Other question, I don't know if this is just outside my business or if it's citywide, but the scooter spots. Um, there's one directly across the street from me on the corner and people think it's a parking spot because there's a space outlined in the street and it's used every day with cars parked on the corner right by the crosswalk. Okay, thank Does the city have plans to remove those? Because I don't want that to reflect badly on me that it, there's cars parked illegally across the street. That should not reflect badly on you. Um, I'm sure those will be removed if we're not extending the program, which was the latest announcement, although we do plan to talk about that a little bit. Um, but if there's confusion, I think that's a parking enforcement matter that we maybe would ask the administration to address both. Uh, well, well, if it is marked, it does seem like a confusing inducement to park illegally in a spot. So probably ought to correct those markings, right? Okay, thank you. Because I know there are certain people that aren't here tonight that will bring up that issue. I would like that addressed before it becomes a problem. Okay. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'd like to move that uh, to substitute um, the new version 
uh, which is the file labeled Automobile Repair Facility Regs Clean 0609-2023 uh, tonight in committee. Second. Motions made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 That motion passes. Can you make that other motion? Um, a move to amend the substitute version as indicated by Director Vargo. Yeah, Director Vargo, do you want to restate your language? Yes, Council Member, of course. Um, subsection G of 781.02 uh, will be changed. The words A calendar year will be deleted. In their place will be two words, N annual. So the entire provision will now read, an automobile business operation permit shall be effective on an annual basis, comma, shall expire on June 30 of each year, comma, and shall not be transferable, period. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, so yeah, I already moved. But okay. Yes, I will move to substitute uh, that language. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Discussion? Um, just a point of clarification, do we need to include something to indicate that the first year would be an 18-month license? I, under I understand that that can just have, you know, the administration's intent is there, but I don't know if we need to spell that out. I just don't want the businesses to be, you know, pay for one six-month license and then pay for... Yeah. Um, it, thank you, Council Member. It's, it's a good question, but we were never... Um, the building department was always going to have some flexibility as to when they do their permitting anyway. Uh, the effective date will vary from the actual inspection. So I don't think we, we need to. Uh, this gives the building department, in essence, six months to inspect each of the um, operations for the first time. And then it'll be effective for uh, a year, the closer the inspections are to June 30th. But if the inspections are at March, yes, there will be that, that, that entity is not going to be reinspected the following March. They'll wait. So, in essence, it will be an extended period, but this gives flexibility to the building department, and they may very well wait a while to do the inspections. Okay. So, it's just so it would be clear that the business would not have to pay for more than one permit per year. No question about it. Okay. It's going to expire June 30th of the year, regardless of when the inspection occurs. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh. Uh, in the, for the building department's not here, so um, it may be a question that we aren't able to ha have an answer to right now. But I'd like to understand, so, you know, I know we've gotten some commercial inspectors you know, so what type of training is our building and housing department going to have for automotive? I mean, there is, it's kind of just parking, you know, ample space, but there are some judgment calls in there, which I'd like to understand kind of what training our folks are going to have. Is there, is there some prescribed training course they can take, if they plan to take? Uh, just interested in some discussion on that point. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Um, I'm not aware of any formal training that they will do. They will understand the significance of this, given that it's a, a new regulation uh, of an industry for the first time. So they'll be very focused. But it, there were arguments presented by certain segments of the industry, and, and many of them on this issue um, were not applicable. What we are, the city is going to undertake a non-intrusive visual inspection. Are there cars parked on the street? Is the lot orderly? Is the bay open? The building department is inherently qualified to make that call. That's all this is about. That's all the city wants to um, uh, get out of the inspectors. They're not in there in any technical sense. They're not looking at software. They're not looking at how 
quickly the lifts go up, whether they comply with industry standards. It is a non-scientific inspection. Cars on the street, cars on the lot, bays open. So we're more than comfortable with the professionalism of the building department undertaking this inspection. Thank you. Thank you. But also looking for tires, <clears throat> tires and other materials, right? Okay. Yes, there's a provision that the tires outside have to be fenced in. Again, that's a very visual, common sense uh, inspection. Okay. Um, hearing no further discussion, I'd like to move that we um, recommend the, um, the amended substitute version to the full council for adoption. Okay. All right, let's make sure we uh, all in favor of that amendment. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Now I'll move that we recommend the amended substitute version to the full council for adoption. Second. All, uh, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Without objection, we are adjourned. <laughs>